Sometimes creativity is born from restriction. At least that's what I tell myself. I'm sure the directors were terribly disappointed. I was all right. <laughs> Hi, my name is Reggae Jean Page, and this is my Holy Rail. So this Alexander Messine garment, Alexander Messine? Alexander McQueen garment found itself onto my holy rail because this is what I wore for SNL, um, which was one of the most terrifying nights of my entire life. And I think there's something about choosing your wardrobe as armor as much as something practical to carry you through special occasions. It's, it's a marker as well. It was a night when I kind of needed to bolster myself and kind of hold myself up to the kind of height that I needed to carry that stage. It was the first time I'd interacted with an audience in probably well over a year because we're in the middle of the pandemic. And right up until the last minute, we'd actually planned to wear two or three different suits. I kind of kept changing my mind on it and nothing felt right. Nothing was reinforcing the energy of what we needed to bring to that show. And then suddenly we came back to this thing just because it has such a dynamic range. There's the formality of the fact that it's kind of, it's, it's a black suit jacket. It's not overly ornate. Then there's this pop of ostentatiousness. And we decided not to put a shirt under it. We put a simple white t-shirt. We went with lighter boots, which might have annoyed McQueen at the time, because I don't think we wore theirs. I think we wore someone else's. Just because I wanted to feel light on my feet. I wanted to feel like I could kind of, kind of like a boxer, but a really well-dressed one. Just kind of skipping onto the stage and having the agility to interact with an audience that I think wanted a light on its feet experience. It was, it was a perfect partner in crime. And so that's why this is made onto my holy rail. Uh, my advice on how to dress up for a big event. Honestly, it would be to listen to opinions that you don't have yet. I think that's my advice for most things in life. Be a little bit daring, but also listen carefully to yourself about what it is that you want to say. I think that clothes are very much an unspoken language, but they can be very eloquent. But I like there being a practical element to it as well in terms of how it changes how you carry yourself, whether that's through confidence, or whether that's through the weight of the jacket or the t-shirt or the shoes or the, or the trousers. But it's also not about shouting at people. I think I like drawing folks in rather than kind of running and getting up in people's faces. Uh, so this is George's hat from Roots. One of his many hats, actually, he had a few. This is the elder George's hat. This is the last hat he had. I'm not a big kind of, what did you steal from set kind of actor. because it's like, I don't want to nick stuff. This stuff costs money, man. People put work into that. But I will ask to take mementos um, because you get very close with a the character. They become like a close friend of yours that you spent a lot of time with and that you went through some stuff with. It's usually the characters you play go through some stuff. I like this hat because it traveled so much. It's deliberately a little bit battered because it survived a war, it survived a transatlantic journey. Actually, did it? No, I think it was after he came back. This hat's almost like a sigil for George, um, which is why it's so important to me. Because I like the idea of selecting things that are not just valuable to you, but that speak loudly of what is at the center of you. So like the feather that's still in this hat and it's a little bit worse for wear because it is. It's from like a, a, a game-winning um, fight in cock, which was the center of what made George proud. It was where he found power in life. It was where he found agency more than anything else. But it was intrinsic to this man because it was grasping and a holding and a flaunting of identity. And so this has always been very, very precious to me. And I was very glad that they let me keep it after the shoot as a place in my home. So these are the rehearsal sticks. Um, I brought these along because I find the idea of practicality in wardrobe interesting. And this is probably the most ex extreme example of that that I found. Music was so intrinsic to this character. Rhythm was so intrinsic to this character, to his inner rhythm. He's almost constantly dancing, kind of inside and out. If his feet aren't dancing, then he's, his internal rhythm is dancing. If he's not drumming, he's still drumming in his head. And I came up with the idea that this guy just carries them everywhere. He's obsessed. And so we like tucked them into his belt which I think you'll see in parts of the film where he'll just be like walking down the street, like drumming on trash cans and stuff. Like he's just one of these guys where the music, it sounds cheesy, it's flowing through him at all times. And these were the sticks that I bought to rehearse with because I learned to drum as a kid, but I was a punk drummer. And so it was kind of all very kind of straightforward Dave Grohl style, just like bashing it out. And I had to relearn uh, my entire technique for drumming, my entire body shape to kind of get this more expressive 
jazz shape. And so I carried these around everywhere and kind of made them part of the wardrobe. Um, and so it wasn't these sticks, but I'd, I'd never drummed with sticks this light before because I was used to something much, much heavier. If I drummed the way that I drum with sticks this light, they'd break in seconds. And then I had to learn to kind of have a gentler touch and caress the right symbol. So I kind of got used to a new weight of stick. And I think I requested these sticks, the Vic Firth 7As, as the prop on set because theirs were heavier and thicker and I didn't think he'd use those. It's almost like this is his weapon of choice. So we're almost like a sword in a sheath at his side at all times because the greatest threat to Chicago Sweetney is that the world lost its rhythm. And so at any point you could pull him out and just kind of bring it back, you know?